Iceman forgave and adopted his son's murderer. On May 27, 2002, Ike's son was tragically murdered. After so much grief, he expected to feel hate upon seeing his son's murderer. Instead, something unexplainable happened. I walk in that courtroom and I see Takoya, the young man who killed my son, and I'm telling you, for the moment I laid eyes on him, I loved him. He looked like my boy, you know, just bigger. I asked God what was wrong with me. Why didn't I hate him? Takoya was sentenced to life in prison. Years passed, but I couldn't stop thinking about Takoya and eventually wrote a letter that at the time seemed crazy. At the end of the letter, I said, uh, I need a favor. I said, I, I miss my son, Ike Jr. I said, I'd like you to fill in for him until we all get to heaven. Ike wasn't sure if you'd even get a response, but what he got was so much more. Dear Mr. Brown, I told God that if I heard from you, I would give my life to him. <coughs> if you meant what you said, if you forgave me, if you have me, from this point on, you're my dad and I'm your son. This <laughs> With that being said, I'd like to give infinity honors to my Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim Rekakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS. I'd like to give salutations to Shepherds of Berea Camp, salutations to the House of David, Dav Dav Dav, man, women, and children out there pushing this word in truth and sincerity, and not for being glory. And big ups to the whole four elect. And the most high raise you up in a speedy fashion, the priest Karak Kahan from the Shepherds of Berea Camp. And I'm going to entitle this video The Power of Forgiveness, okay? The power of forgiveness, all right? And when you read all throughout the scriptures, man, you know, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah shows way more mercy and way more forgiveness than he actually exacts, or should I say, executes his judgment, man, all right? Because when you think about it on the whole, you know, we only had two major events where the Lord really judged all of Israel. Now, the first one was the flood, okay, where the Lord flooded the whole earth, okay? Yeah, civilization was pretty much saved through through uh, 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 Noah and his sons, okay? And you have the um, destruction that's about to come, okay, which this place is going to be burnt up through nuclear fire, okay? But all throughout that, in between that time until what's about to happen soon, okay, future events, all these prophecies is dealing with what? The Lord's forgiveness. Okay, us turning our back to the Most High. Him punishing us. Him forgiving us. Us turning our back to the Most High. Him punishing us. Him forgiving us. Us going through slavery through different parts of all of history. And Lord forgiving us, man. That is the Lord showing his mercy. And this is heavy right here. Because as you just seen from this video, okay, you have this father named Ike, all right? Okay, which actually uh, was law enforcement, and he had a son named Ike Jr. Now, his son was murdered by this individual named Takoya. I believe the last name was uh, Kriner, or Kriner, if I'm saying it correctly, C-R-I-N-E-R, -E okay? And, you know, when he was in the courtroom and he saw his son's uh, murderer, he said all he could do was just love him and forgive him. Now, really think about that for a second. You got to meditate. Just imagine if you have a son and then he was just snuffed out. Somebody murdered him. Okay, this is your son now. Looks just like you. Supposed to carry on your, 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 your you know, your, uh, your legacy. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Hold on one second. It's supposed to carry on your legacy, okay? And he was just snuffed out. And then you see his murderer, and then all you could think about is just forgiving him. Just think about as a whole, if Israel was to forgive one another. Somebody was to do a drug, somebody was to, uh, 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 you know, lace your weed with certain type of drugs and used to forgive them. If you was to, you know, rebuke one another, and we was to change and repent. Okay, if somebody was to kill one another. Credit card scan to one another. Not only forgive, but that person repent and say sorry. Just imagine as a whole if Israel was to do that where we would be right now. Okay? And this is a powerful video. 
All right, which brings out a lot of concepts. I'm gonna tackle one. All right, I uh, uh, advise other brothers, you know, to, to um, land back off of this and do the same because there's a lot of concepts. But I'm gonna tackle this one, man. All right, so we're gonna get straight to it because even when you read the scriptures, it's like I said, it's countless situations dealing with this man with forgiveness and we're going to tackle one in particular right now okay so we're going to go straight to the book of Acts 7 now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna jump around a little bit and i advise you brothers and aqua sisters all right to read along okay and also just in general man you know the book of acts you know the seventh eighth and ninth chapter all the scriptures is powerful to read but for this right here you know in your spare time definitely read it Acts 7, chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter. This is a heavy read, man. This right here is beautiful. Like I said, we're going to skim down. So pretty much when you're dealing with Acts the 7, chapter, okay, this is dealing with, okay, Stephen, okay, the disciple Stephen being persecuted, okay, and pretty much about to be put to death, all right? And all this was being orchestrated by a person named Saul, which in the future will later on be named the Apostle Paul, Okay. So, we're going to go over this, all right? You know, when you read from the beginning of the chapter on down, it's pretty much, you know, Stephen, instead of him pleading for his life, okay, he pretty much gave a whole history, okay, chronological order from the history of Israel all the way up to this very day, just letting them know how far they fell, man, all right? Which made them even more enraged, because he didn't beg for his life, nah, he just pretty much rebuked them and put them in their place, man. But we got Acts 7 and... Let's start at 56, because like I said, I'm going to jump around a little bit, because it's a lot. We got Acts 56, Acts 7 and 56. It says, and said, behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of the Most High. Verse 57. That, yeah, so you see, even right there, that's heavy, because, matter of fact, I'm going to start at 55. It says, Acts 7 and 55, but he, being full of the Holy Spirit, looked up steadfastly into heaven. And saw the glory of the Most High. And Yahweh Shah standing on the right hand of the Most High. See that? So, right after he finished pr pretty much rebuking them, okay? And then, like I said, they're going through the process of persecuting them. You know, the Lord pretty much opened up the heavens for him, man. And that had to be a beautiful sight. Knowing that right when he's about, you know, to be uh, murdered, the Lord is just giving him that reassurance. Like, yo, I got you. You know? That's beautiful, man. Verse 56. And said, behold... I see the heavens open and the son of man standing on the right hand of the most high. Verse 57. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. Okay, so here it is. You had all these Israelites, man. Mind you, all Stephen did was preach the truth. Okay, he was persecuted for what? Preaching the gospel. Telling Israel to repent from their sins, okay? Letting them know that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And they persecuted this man for it, okay? It says, verse 58, And cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Right. Now, Saul, again, like I said, was the one that orchestrated this, okay? He was the leader of this whole situation. So, when you're reading this, all right, you have to look at it. Like I said, from a spiritual eye, look at it like Ike Jr., okay, was Stephen, okay? And then look at it like Saul, okay, for this comparison, was pretty much um, to Koya, all right? The murderer of Ike. In this case, who orchestrated it? It was Saul, right? That killed Stephen, verse 59. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon the Most High and saying, Yahweh, Lord, Yahweh Shah, receive my spirit. Verse 60, and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now, look how powerful that is, man. In his last breath, he could have put curses on them. Huh? He could have said, Lord, take them out for me for, they, for what they're doing. No, in his last breath, he said, lay not this sin on their charge. Now, this is a multiple multiple of people now. Stephen put up a prayer asking for the Lord to forgive him. Now, we don't know how many people out of that crowd was forgiven, 
But if you're spiritual, you know it definitely was one person, okay, that that prayer hit that was forgiven, okay? And we're going to read on it, all right? So we're going to go to Acts the 8th chapter, all right? I'm going to read a little bit here, then we're going to go straight to 9, just to show what Saul was doing, man. We got Acts 8, and let's start at 1. It says, and Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. <clears throat> Verse 2, and devout men carried Stephen to his burial. Right, man. So, you know, pretty much Stephen was being um, laid to rest. And made great lamentations over him. Right. So they weeped over him and they cried. Verse 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and healing men and women, committing them to prison. Right, man. You see that? So this is just to bring out what Saul was doing. He was persecuting the church. Okay. He was slaughtering a lot of individuals that was preaching his word. That was pushing the gospel, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. <coughs> but again, like I said, a prayer was put out there, okay? And Saul don't even know what's about to happen, man. We got Acts 9. We're going to jump. Acts 9. And again, like I said, let's start at 1. We're going to get to this point. Acts 9 and 1. It says, And Saul, yet breathing out, threatening and slaughtering against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest. Right, so he's still on the mayhem. He's still on the slaughter. Verse 2, and desired of him letters of Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Okay, so he pretty much put the decree out there, man. Like, yo, listen, spread the word. If I find anybody over here pushing this word, pushing this truth and that name, listen. I'm going to bond them, man. And we know what's going to happen with that. We're going to put them in prison or they're going to get persecuted. Verse 3. And as he journeyed, he came to Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Woo! So what was this right here, man? Verse 4. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul. Why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Yahweh Shah, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Right, man. Meaning, yo, you can't go against my will. You don't understand what I'm about to do to you right now. You persecuting the church. But, yo, you can't kick against the pricks. You can't fight back against this. Now, like I said, this is heavy because when the more we read on into it, it lets you know, yeah, how about some y'all shot heard that prayer? And who, who, the Heavenly Father, okay, just like how we was doing with Ike. This right here was that answer being, being uh, was that prayer being answered. This right here was showing the forgiveness. Because let's see what y'all yeah, about some y'all shot does. Verse 6, and, and he terribly, Slug it. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. You see that, man? So immediately, that right there was the forgiveness process. He automatically asked the Lord, what do you want me to do? That was the, I'm sorry. That was the, please forgive me process. That was the, I don't want no smoke with you. And the fact that the Lord even came to him, that was the forgiveness. That was the bonding. The Heavenly Father through his son, Yahweh Shah. Okay, Yahweh through his son, Yahweh Shah. Okay, and that bonding of who? Saul. Like I said, when you look at the video, that was what? Takoya. Because when you looked at the video, what did Takoya said? When Ike wrote that letter to him in the prison. 
He's pretty much saying, listen, you know, there's no way I could ever, you know, mend what I did. But, yo, if you're willing to have me, yeah, I'll be like a son to you. You got to read the room, read between the lines. That's what's going on here. That's what's going on here, man. It says, verse 7, and the men which journeyed, wait, did I read all of, uh, let me read all of verse 6 again. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Which means what? He didn't buck up against the Lord. <laughs> he did it. He listened. Verse 7, And the men, and the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice. But seeing no man. Verse 8. And Saul arose from the earth. And when his eyes were opened. He saw no man. But they laid him by the hand. And brought him into Damascus. Verse 9. So the Lord pretty much blinded him for. I was about to say right here. Verse 9. <coughs> verse 9. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. So the Lord pretty much put him on a fast, man. Gave him time to reflect on what he was doing. And he couldn't see. Just like how to call you. What happened? He was put in jail. Time to reflect, right? Verse 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And he slug it. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tartarus, of Tarsius. For behold, he prayeth. Hold up now. Said he prayeth. So what was Saul doing? He was praying, man. He was asking for forgiveness. He was blind, didn't eat, didn't drink, right? This was Stephen's prayer. And the Lord allowing that forgiveness to happen, but still had to put Saul through it for that mending process, man. And like I said, just really picture that. That's heavy. Because the Lord didn't have to forgive Saul. He could have just killed him. He could have made him fall off that horse and the horse fall on him and just murked him. Right? It says, verse 12, And I have seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. You see that? So it's like a, it's a pretty much a, uh, like a dual screen. On one hand, Lock it. On one hand, hey, you have Saul seeing his vision of the man that's coming to uh, uh, restore his sight through the spirit of power, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. And you have this, you have the uh, 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 other side of the screen where the Lord is given and a nice the commandment to go over it. Verse thirteen, and then I, and Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he have done. To thy saints at Jerusalem. Verse 14. It says. And here he have authority from the chief priests. To bind all that call on thy name. Yeah so pretty much you know Ananias like. Yo I heard how evil this dude was. And yo. This guy was going to put anybody into prison. That was even calling on your name. Preaching your word. Verse 15. But the Lord said unto him. Go thy way. See that? Like yo don't worry about that. Because you don't understand that I already forgave this man. That's not for you to decide. Because you know what? You know you have a lot of individuals in this world that was murderers, liars, thieves. And yes, we have a job, okay? To tell them about what they did. And also, what do we say for them? Yo, if you did that, hey, repent to the Lord. Turn back. You still may have hope. 
So the Lord is saying right here, yo, go to your way, man. Do my will. It says, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Woo! To bear my name before the Gentile and kings and the children of Israel. So look at that process right there, man. Hey, Stephen was murdered and transcended to the spiritual room, right? He fell asleep, all right? Went to the spirit room, but look who replaced him. The Lord said he's a chosen vessel. Hey, Saul was chosen, man, which, like I said, his name ended up turning to what? Apostle Paul. You just saw that video. What did the father do? He forgave the murderer and said, yo, now you my son. What is the Lord saying right here? Like, yo, he's replacing Stephen and he's going to be my son. Because guess what? We all sons of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, right? The word Israel in Hebrew means what? Yasha Allah, which was the prince of the power. What's a prince? It's a son. So one son replaced another. That's forgiveness right there, man. That's heavy. It says, <clears throat> To bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. Verse 16, For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And, you know, when you read the scriptures, yo, Apostle Paul suffered a lot, man. But at the same time, hey, you stoned Stephen. You had to, you know, pay for all the uh, sins that you committed. A lot of individuals died by um, Saul's hand, but he still was a chosen vessel and he went out to do um, uh, uh, great things, man. Okay. He had to right all his wrongs. Verse 17, and Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, brother Saul, the Lord, even Yahweh Shah. See that, man? It says the Lord, even Yahweh Shah, man. You know, side note, for all your individuals that want to say that the Heavenly Father and the Son, all right, are the same. No, they are not. Okay, they are two different entities, okay? They have one agreement, but they're not the same. It says the Lord, even Yahweh Shah, <coughs> that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, have sent me, that thou mightest Receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 18. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. You see that, man? So it was so well, you know, let me read it. It says, And he received sight for a whiff and arose and was baptized. You see that? So that whole blindness fell down like it was scales, man. He was able to see. The Lord just had to purge him out, man. Make him a new man. Renew him. Because what was he going to do? He was going to replace Stephen, man, through the Holy Spirit. That was the power of forgiveness. Uh, we'll read these last two verses, and then we're going to continue on. It says, verse uh, 19, And when he had received meat, <coughs> he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus verse 20 and straight away he preached Yahweh Shah in the synagogue and he is the son of the most high Woo! you see that man what's like it says you read that again verse 20 and straight away he preached Yahweh Shah in the synagogue that he is the son of the most high you see that man <clears throat> so look how the Lord's forgiveness works. Because like I said, anybody else would have just said, yo, eye for eye. He killed my son. I got to kill him. The Lord said, no, that's a chosen vessel. He's going to I'm. He's gonna be my son now. I'm going to have him go out there and prophesy like Stephen did. Matter of fact, I'm going to have him do even more. Huh? And we know that to be true. You know what? Let's, let's continue on. We're going to jump now. We have 1 Corinthians 15 and 9. It says, for I am the least of the apostles that am not meet <coughs> to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of the Most High. You see that, man? 
So he considered himself, yo, not only the least, but yo, man, I'm, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle for what all that I did in my past life. So he came in a humble spirit because he know all that he did. But again, the fact that he's even talking right now shows the Lord forgiveness. Because again, the Lord could have murked him out, man. Verse 10, it says, but by the grace of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. You see that? So he's basically saying, listen, for that forgiveness, for what I did, I have to right my wrongs. And he went 10 times harder. Where he was persecuting the church, he was helping now to build up the church. Where he was breaking down the church, he was helping to build up the church. <coughs> <coughs> Amen. The Apostle Paul didn't take no days off. Because he knew within that time, I got to make this up. I got to be a true son of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. I don't know how much time I have. So guess what? Every second, I'm going to make sure it counts. It says, yet not I, but the grace of the Most High, which was which was with me. Right? Because he knew it wasn't about him. He knew it was Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah through the Holy Spirit that pushed him to do it, man. Because technically, by law, for what he did, he was supposed to, he was supposed to die. He's supposed to get killed. So he knew that was the Holy Spirit that was pushing him to go that go ten times harder. Go hard in the paint, man. Let me see. Uh <coughs> yeah, one more. We got verse 11. It says, Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preached, and so they believed. You see that, man? So everywhere he went, he preached Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. All right. <coughs> and I want to bring this out, man. Because again, the Lord could do whatever he wants. Because you're going to have certain individuals like, nah, I don't agree with that. It's not about what you agree with, man. Because at the end of the day, we all sinners. And the fact that you're even looking at this video right now shows that the Lord has given you a grace period. <clears throat> it says, verse, we got Romans 9 and 15. For he said, he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. You see that, man? So listen, I can forgive who I want to forgive. And this is heavy because really think about that for a second now. <coughs> let's, let, 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 let's deal with this in hindsight. If the Lord... Now, we know the Lord can raise up who he wants to, but let's just think about this in hindsight. If the Lord didn't forgive the Apostle Paul at that time, again, the name was Peter. Would we have, <laughs> would we have the book of Romans? Would we have the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians? Huh? Think about it. Think about it. Look how look how the power of forgiveness actually spreads to other situations. Huh? Will we have Galatians? Huh? Let's talk about it, man. Let's talk about it. Will we have Ephesians? Huh? Will we have Philippians? And we can keep on going, man. <clears throat> A lot of these concepts <coughs> that brothers is reading and precepts, will we have those? Because the Lord used them as a vessel to write the epistles. The letters to all these churches. Would we have that? Hey, it was certain times where Apostle Paul even rebuked the head of the church, Peter. Would that rebuke still have came down? If Apostle Paul wasn't there? You know, just think about it, man. Right now, I just read from the book of Romans. So, you know, these are heavy concepts of how far you know, mercy and forgiveness can go <clears throat> and how it could touch the lives of others because reading these epistles, guess what? These build up concepts. There's a lot of prophecies. And like I said, this is not, this was the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah putting the spirit on Paul to write these, okay? <clears throat> so these are all Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah's words. 
okay? But it's just to show you that he wouldn't have been used as a vessel if the Lord didn't forgive him and adopt him as a son. So we're going to finish this off. A few more precepts. We got second. Second Chronicles 7 and 14, because again, this is dealing with the power of forgiveness. Just like I said earlier, just imagine if all Israel is to be like this, okay? We got Second Chronicles <coughs> 7 and 14. If my people, which are called by my name, hey, that same name, what are we reading about? That name, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, shall humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. <coughs> Just think about that, man. If every single Israelite was to face the east, huh? Young thug, the baby, little baby. Lil Wayne, Jay-Z, Tyler Perry, Oprah. Let's talk about it. Cat Williams, let's talk about it. Let's talk about all these individuals. Huh? Just imagine these individuals repenting. Just imagine these individuals repenting. I'm just putting that out there. Huh? All these rappers that talk about gun violence and killing one another. All these credit card scammers. Huh? All these individuals that's trying to sell you a course and defraud you. Like, comment, and describe. <coughs> <coughs> and comment. Huh? Let's talk about it. P. Diddy. Jamie Foxx. Think about all these individuals. It says Israel. Just imagine if all Israel, huh? Dwayne Wade's son, E.J. Johnson. Just imagine if they all was to turn to the east and pray and say that name and ask for forgiveness and sincerity. What would happen? Now we know. Prophecy got to be filled. It's not going to happen. But this is just to show you the Lord's forgiveness that if he was to do that, immediately <clears throat> the kingdom will be translated from one kingdom to another. We would be in all righteousness, man. The kingdom of heaven would be established. This is the Lord showing you the power of forgiveness, man. Last one. We got Romans 11 and 26. <coughs> 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 so Romans 11 and 26. It says, And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Hey, brock the owl, brock the owl, shah, bash, brock with Dutch. Think about how heavy that is, man. Because like we just read, <clears throat> excuse me, just like how we just saw right here in this video right here. Got this individual, Takoya. He killed another federal Israelite named Ike Jr. Now, mind you, in the kingdom of heaven, these same spirits are going to be back again, but they're going to be in righteousness. So could you imagine that? <clears throat> these same two individuals are going to come back again in the kingdom of heaven. Huh? Coming through the loins of the elect. Because we're going to be, hey, because we, because, hey, man, in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to have our ribs. We're going to be, we got to be fruitful and multiply. We got to bring all Israel back in, man. These two could be literally your sons. They could be brothers, not knowing in their past life, one brother killed the other. Think about that. <clears throat> Think about that. Tukey Williams, one of the founders of the Crips. It's going to be in the kingdom of heaven. Think about individuals that he murdered. He's going to be saying shallow warm to them. You know, I, I just got to pause for a second and think about that, man. 
Because in the kingdom of heaven, it says, all Israel shall be saved. Why? Because even with the two-thirds being, you know, put on that nuclear fire, destroyed on this side, they're still going to come back again. Reborn. Huh? Bobby Shmurda. <clears throat> all these individuals out here doing this drill music. Killing one another. They're going to be in the kingdom of heaven saying shalom to one another. Not knowing what they did in their past life. <clears throat> that right there is forgiveness. No grudges. No eyes equal towards your brother, man. That's heavy. But hey, I wanted this to be short and to the point. You know, <clears throat> like I said, a lot of other concepts could come from this, man. So, you know, your brothers run with it. That being said, I pray this has been edifying. I'd like to give a fitting honor to my Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Kagodash. Double honest to the apostles and elders of GMS that rule well in truth and sincerity and not for vain glory. Big ups to the shepherds of the red camp. I love y'all brothers. <clears throat> Big ups to the house of David. Da, 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 da. Man, women, and children out there also pushing his word in truth and sincerity. And big ups to the hopeful elect. May the most high raise you up in a speedy fashion. Once again, this has been the priest Karal Kakahan. Pray this has been edifying. Till next time, Lord willing. Shalom.